what's up everybody just wanted to show you guys what I'm working on today it is the wastegate system for my car this is what it looks like exploded or taken apart and this is what it looks like all put together so the reason I wanted to do this video is just to show everybody what goes on inside the wastegate system the first time I had one or started to take one apart to diagnose a problem I was really worried about like what am I gonna screw up when I take this thing apart because I've never seen inside there so I just figured I'd show you inside of one of these things to show you exactly how to take it apart so you're not so worried about it yourself. And then if you're having problems or just want to upgrade your system or want to know how a wastegate works, now you'll know. So follow along with me here and I'll show you exactly what I got going on. All right, so pretty basic setup here. You've got the wastegate hot side, I'll call it. I don't know exactly what it's called, but this is the piece of stainless that's cast. This handles all the heat. This here would be what would be like a valve guide inside of the engine. Then you have the valve seat. So this is gonna be what the valve actually seals against right there. You can see the chamfered edge. Then you've got the valve itself. So pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. You can see the edge is cut at an angle and that's what sits perfectly on there. Then you have this spring and these springs are gonna be color coded. You see this one's red. So the red ones are going to be so for a certain PSI. They have different colors and different strength springs so that you can adjust the mechanical boost accordingly. This right here is going to be part of the aluminum housing. This is the top part. So you can see it's got a port here and a port here. And then it's got some rings, grooves in here. So that's going to be where the spring sits. You'll notice it sits perfectly in there and you can see there's a couple different ones so that's going to be depending on what spring you use then this is the bottom half of it now these are the water cooled versions of the tile wastegates so this is a newer version they're upgraded updated and they've got water ports so the water comes in one side runs through here and cools the diaphragm and the this whole apparatus and then comes back out here um, so that's what that's going to be for. If you have an older wastegate or a non-water cooled one, you won't have to worry about that part, but they look almost exactly the same. All right, moving on here, this is the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is going to be what keeps the vacuum or boost pressure on the top and the bottom and um, just kind of what moves in order to do that. You'll see, kind of hard to explain. Then just basic stuff, all the hardware, this is going to be the V-band clamp for both sides. All right, so let's get right into what kind of tools we'll need. Pretty basic setup here. Uh, I just have a two millimeter Allen head. I use a short Allen and then I've got some long Allens. So this is what it looks like when it's all put together. You can see the V-band clamps are right around the housing right here. So take those off right away. Now I bought these used from a friend of mine and you know when you buy used stuff even if it's a good friend of yours or a solid source you always want to do your due diligence and inspect it and check it out. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking it apart, I'm checking it all out, I'm making sure there's no damage or anything that needs to be cleaned up, replaced. Anytime you buy used parts it's really a good idea to do that. So that's why I'm taking it apart and checking it all out. And then I also have a, an ulterior motive that I want to get these coated. So I want to ceramic coat these. And uh, just to make it look a little nicer and help, help with the heat just a bit too. And so that's the reason why I'm taking it apart. Now I'll show you right away. When I took it apart, I, I noticed right away there was some damaged threads on one of the V-band clamp bolts. So I already am starting to save myself some hassle. You know, it's the threads are okay up here. So the nut would have started to go on and then it would have kind of gotten tight feeling right here. And I might have thought it was tight, but in fact, it was just getting to the stripped out section of the threads and then it would have had a problem later on. So double check everything. It's always a good idea to make sure that it's good to go. All right. So just follow along with me here. I'm going to take this thing apart. I've done this a handful of times, but I'm always open to a suggestion. If you have anything that you would suggest to make this a little easier or some tricks that you've learned along the way, feel free to please comment and let me know. You know, we're all here to learn and anything we can do to make this process easier and quicker is better. The spring is in here and if you were to just take off these six bolts here it would just fly off. So what I like to do is just grab a simple 
clamping setup, I just use one of these quick, quick grip clamps. Just squeeze it to the table you're working on. Then you can take these off and slowly release it to pop that up. All right, so th these right here are going to be three millimeter from tile. I would suggest you get them loose by hand first. Make sure your clamp is nice and tight. Once you kind of loosen them, then you can use some power tools if you want to speed things up. But I would always suggest both tightening and loosening, you're going to want to use hand tools. Okay, once you get that done, then you can move on to the power stuff. Now, there's a thing called a ball end Allen. I would not recommend doing that. I want to use a straight end Allen on these because even though the ball end would be easier to get in there, it's not really good to untorque things like that. All right, so now I've got those taken out. I'm just going to release here while I kind of put a little pressure on it this way. Just like that. There we go. So you can see that that could have been a disaster if you had just not known that that was going to happen. So once you do that, then it's all the spring pressure is released and you can kind of just take it off. You'll see here the spring is sitting on the diaphragm perch. So that's that aluminum piece in there. I don't know if that's the real name for it. That's what I'm going to call it. But basically you can just pull the spring off. No problem. You see it's a red spring as well. And then you've got the diaphragm here. So the way that it works, here's the valve and the valve is pushed down against the seat by that spring, but when there's exhaust pressure, exhaust gas is pushed up against the valve here, and then when the diaphragm opens and pulls the valve up, this is where the exhaust gas is vented around the turbo and out the wastegate dump tube, which prevents the turbo from spooling or building more boost. So you can see that when that valve gets pushed on, the diaphragm here is pushed up, but the diaphragm makes a seal between the lower half of this section and the upper half. So you've got the cap on here, and basically you'll just run a boost source line from the turbo or the intake manifold to the bottom port, and that's going to allow that boost pressure to help push the diaphragm up and overcome the spring pressure. Then if you wanted to add more boost than the spring is capable of, then you would use a boost controller, and that would add boost pressure to the top port. So let's say you have a 15 pound spring and you want to run 20 pounds of boost. Well, then you, the boost controller is going to add five pounds of boost to the top side of the diaphragm, which is then going to make it where the valve doesn't open until you hit 20 pounds of boost. If you don't have an electronic boost controller, this is going to be just a mechanical system and the gate pressure, what you may have heard, is just simply the spring, the spring pressure that's allowing that valve to be pushed up against the valve seat here. All right, so enough about how the damn thing works. Let's take it apart. So in here you can see a couple of Allen head set screws. Okay, so these are going to be what hold the valve itself right in that little groove with the diaphragm right here. Okay, so I'm going to take those out. Same thing here. I would recommend using hand tools. This is a two millimeter, so very small set screw. You don't want to screw this up or strip it. So just go nice and easy. Take these apart. Make sure you have the Allen fully seated down in there before you loosen it. That way you don't strip it. If you strip these, they are a bitch to get off or to fix. So you really, really don't want to do that. Uh, all right, so I've got those pretty loose. Might need to take them a little bit looser there just to make sure it's completely free. Okay, so now when I pick up on this, it should be released from the valve. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dump those onto my tray here so I don't lose them. I'm going to go flying. All right, so there you go. So you see that now it's released, which means the valve is no longer connected. So now, you just gently pull up on the diaphragm. Whoop, there it goes, comes right out. So it's not sealed or glued in here in any way. It's just simply set into the groove and then the top hat 
or the top section here kind of squeezes it together and that's how it's fit. So, so now here's what we want to inspect. First we can look under here. We can see it's a little dirty. So you can definitely go through here and clean that, but the dirt is okay. The other thing is the valve here. To remove this valve, we have to take off this lower portion of the housing. So I'll do that here in just a minute. Right now though, I want to look at this diaphragm. So looking at the diaphragm, at first glance it doesn't look so bad, but then if you peel this back and look underneath, you can see there's some tearing at the diaphragm. Now this isn't horrible, okay, and I, I'm sure that, you know, after some use that happens and it's normal. Now what's, what is important is that there's no air that can get through here, so it's sealed. Now it would be up to you at this point to decide, is that too bad, do I want to replace it? You want to make sure though on the rest of this that there's no tears or rips or anything like that. So that's really what I'm checking out here. I think probably this is okay and I'm just going to put it back together and, and let that go. But the rest of this here is what I'm looking at and it looks good. So I'll just kind of clean this up, wipe it down gently and be okay with that. If this was a professional road race car that, you know, had proper funding, then maybe I would decide to replace that. But it's not. It's my drift car and that doesn't matter as much. All right. So now onto here, that's what I grabbed this short one for. These are three millimeter and you really don't want to use one of the longer Allens, even if it's a snap on or a high quality tool. The reason why is because these are put on with a lot of torque and the shorter the Allen is, the easier it's going to be to transfer that torque into here. So uh, I really would recommend using a short Allen like this to get these loose. These are going to be kind of a pain to get it loose. So I'm going to put it in a clamp here. This V-band here, it's important you don't clamp right to that because that's how it seals. So what I'm going to do is get a piece of aluminum as a soft jaw and use that to protect. Okay, that one's free. You can see these were definitely put on with some Loctite of some sort. Make sure you're pushing on it pretty tight. And then when you go to loosen it, you just kind of give it a pop. Just like that. So now you can take it off with the power tool. Now looking from the old one, you can see that there is an O-ring there. So when you pull this off, you know, it's going to be a little bit tough, but you don't have to put a ton of torque on it. And there you go. Got that sucker off. Now I can push this valve and the valve is going to push that valve seat out. So to do this, you can see I've got the vise just tight enough to where the edge sits on it, but it's not actually clamping onto the valve seat. And all I'm going to do is just gently hammer with a brass hammer on top of here and that's going to push the valve seat out see it coming out there. It's best if you can kind of catch it, so I'll put my finger down here and boom, there you go. See that right there? So nothing hit the ground. The valve came right out. And here is the valve seat. So you can see this is kind of corroded and gross. Uh, I'm going to clean this up with a wire wheel just to get the, the funk off of it. If you wanted to lap the valve or re-cut this seat, the valve seat, you can. It's not critical that it seals 100% because remember it's going to be opening quite a bit to just bleed off that boost. But you know a good seal is, is okay uh, or ideal. And then I'm just going to kind of clean this up. Same thing here. I've got some pitting and some corrosion but overall it's in pretty good shape. The housing itself is same kind of thing. A um, little bit rusty and gross but not too terrible and remember I'm getting these coated anyway so who cares if it's a little bit off you know a little bit gross they're gonna sandblast it anyway so um, so there you go that's pretty much it I mean I've got all the parts now disassembled got the lower housing you see how that comes together I'm gonna take that o-ring off and probably replace it or at least just inspect it um, 
you know, you can see it comes off pretty easy. Oh, it tore. So that's all right. I, I plan to replace those anyway, especially since, again, this is getting coated, so they're going to have to take that off no matter what. So I'll get in there and scrape that. Now is a time if you wanted to get these anodized a different color, you could easily do that, and that would be cool. Um, match your engine bay or whatever. You know, you'd want to take all the plugs out and all the fittings, of course, to do that. But yeah, there you go. So don't be scared next time. You got to take something apart. You know, as long as you take your time, use your head, and don't force anything, it should be okay. You know, just don't be afraid to jump in there and figure out how this stuff works. Sometimes you make mistakes or you're not sure how it comes apart. I've certainly done it. I've destroyed some expensive parts trying to figure out how the hell to take them apart, and it's not great. But then you won't do it the wrong the second time, you know. So the point is just don't be scared, you know. It's just uh, bits of metal in weird shapes. And if you need to inspect it, it's certainly better to do it now while you have it off the car than to have to troubleshoot it at an event or get knocked out of competition because of something stupid like a wastegate is, you know, missing or, or has a hole in the diaphragm and is destroyed. So... Little stuff like that, you know, is really annoying, especially after you've paid all the money to go to an event, and then you're just like, oh my god, my stupid car broke again. So that's the worst. All right, so that's it. Real simple. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. If you have any pro tips that I maybe didn't go over or anything that is something that we should discuss, absolutely let me know, and I'll add it to the description. And if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to make more content that you want to watch. So I only know if you tell me.